Hello everyone, welcome to Malware Analysis for Hedgehog. Today's topic is wrap files and how to unwrap them. Um, or at least it's one method to unwrap them. I think um, I will show some others in other videos. So, um, yeah, our file today is win32.bat. Um, I changed the extension so I do not accidentally execute it. And uh, let's check what this file does. And I will explain along the way what a wrapper actually is. So, well, okay, Dai says it's a possibly a VBS to exe file, and that means um, it assumes it's a VB script that inside that has been put inside an exe pod of executable file. Um, so a wrapper usually works that way that you have a script or let's say, or Java, or Python script, or VB script, or batch, and that um, there's an application that turns it into an exe by creating, um, well, putting it into, into a step, and this step will drop the script inside into the temp folder, and execute it, and delete the script after execution. And the deletion, execution deletion part happens so fast that you often cannot just grab the file from the temp folder. Um, so you need some tricks to get it. Okay, uh, so it says it's VB2EXE possibly, and the compiler is pure basic, but we don't care about the compiler if we know it's a wrap file, we just want the script inside and nothing else. So um, we do not want to debug the unwrapping or something, so don't care about the compiler. But uh, yeah, I now I want to know um, if that's indeed the case with the VBS to EXE. Um, so first I like to check with Podex Analyzer visualization where the interesting areas are. So let's just check this. I still don't get the mic stand. So the typing is a bit loud. And that's the visualization. Oh, and I missed one part. Here. Now give us a visualization. There it is. Uh, and the fan is loud, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, there is the visualization part. And in this area, at the end, there is a, well, there's a higher entropy here, so it might be where the script is packed. And um, we have strings here. These strings here and here, they come from the imports, so we can see the imports there. And uh, the strings here in the end, they are part of the resources. Um, often, if they are part of the resources, you have the manifest there or, um, or other information that's, that's in strings. And here are also some strings. So let's take a look into the, the area at the end. Um, this uh, at the front, it looks more like code. And that's something you would um, look at in a disassembler or an OLLI. Um, but for now, I want to look at it with a hex editor, and um, that's where I usually see the strings and so on. So yeah, that's more code-like. And here is the area with the imports. Let's take a look at the end. Some, some padding strings. And indeed, there's the manifest. And this area is the version information, which sometimes gives away some information, like what, what the file was intended to do. Uh, but actually, even if it says it's from Microsoft, you cannot rely on that, because everyone can just edit this version information. And some people do. Um, that's an interesting string here. B2E decompile paven.bat. Um, B2E stands for batch to exe, and let's see if we find some, some similar strings here. That's the imports part, 
this regular pattern is often, well, it can uh, be um, image or icon. Um, okay, now that's interesting. Here we have the strings that belong to a batch to XE, XE wrapper and there's also some kind of batch script inside here but it's not our batch script that we want uh, our batch script is well saved somewhere and encoded or encrypted somewhere in the file now we know it's a wrapper and with that we can uh, use Oli to get the file inside We open our file and the idea now is that we just set a breakpoint on the right file um, call. So let's do that, run. We are now in kernel 32 at the beginning of the right file function. And we already see that there's uh, the beginning of a batch script. So let's follow it up. And there it is. We will, let's see if we see the end. Yeah, here's the end. So we can just copy that binary copy, binary copy. That's a good idea. Uh, now open your hex editor, new file, and paste it. And there we can save that. That's our dumped batch. Here it is. Now change the language and nice. That's a, a ransomware or yeah, that's a ransomware. Now you can see what's well, a pretty cheap ransomware. I mean, uh, like for the lines again. Um, what it does is uh, it deletes the safe boot keys. Okay. Um, it adds itself to the usual auto run value. It disables task manager, registry tools, and CMD. Um, removes the desktop, I guess. Um, and then, well, you know, it disables CMD and then it says Windows blocked, uh, Windows blocked in the CMD. I'm not sure that this will be shown. Um, if CMD is disabled, so hmm. sometimes I wonder if the malware authors actually test their malware. So what's that? That's um, the code. So and and this turns everything back except for the safe boot option. Um, so I guess it's disabled safe boot if you remove these keys. So. Um, but this this will be reverted, so um, you can just enter this password, or you can't because the command CMD is disabled. <laughs> um, well, let's run the file. I think this might be interesting. Um, yeah, but just as showed notice, um, now we unpack the batch script using Oli by by um, breaking the write file call. Could have also waited until it writes, it has written the file and like before the deletion could have breakpointed there and grabbed the file from the temp folder. Um, Alternatively, you can change the security settings on the temp folder so no one is allowed to delete any file in it. And uh, this might, obviously, this will prevent the deletion so you can grab it from there. It does not work for this sample. I tried it and it uh, creates a folder, uh, folder in there and then a file and then, um, because it can't delete anything it will just um, break the, the application will just stop working so hmm okay <laughs> um, but this usually works okay um, executing it it 
it's not a batch really this one's a PE but uh, well Windows doesn't care if it's dot but or dot exe or anything it's as long as it's executable so okay Let's see and that's it oh, no CMD and uh, no ransom node I doubt that they got any money from that ransomware now if I try to open task manager it says it was deactivated by the administrator okay and that's already it for today um, thank you for watching and uh, next week I'm probably pretty busy so for, for now oh, it's a bit hard to keep the schedule of one week I guess for now it's more two week schedule um, but I try to get back to one week again okay um, Oh, see you next time.